Ha ha! Coming to you from Houston, Texas, this is the Sports Trap Podcast, and my name is John Trap, holding it down off of Main Street. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, or however you guys are listening to us today. Thank you so much for joining me. To the left of me and to the right of me, I got Mr. Christopher C. Rod Rodriguez. What it do? Swinging and banging. Houston, let's go. And of course, on the ones and twos, making sure everything's a go, Mr. Qua. What up? AKA. Mr. Quality Control, thank you so much. Are we ready to go? Boom, boom. Let's get it. All right. So uh, the uh, 2019 NBA Award Show was last night, and uh, boy, oh, boy, <laughs> H-Town's lit, huh? Um, I got I to gotta, I gotta say I respect, but I got a bone to pick. But we'll get into that a little later. Um, also want to cover a little bit of the Astros. Finally, uh, we won a couple games, huh? A little slide. Let's shoot. As of tonight, too. <laughs> Two-game right. win streak. Let's go. And uh, LeVar Ball kind of pissed off some people, huh? I don't think he's invited to ESPN, at least for a while. Rightfully so. Jalen uh, uh, Rose might be a little upset. Rightfully so. And, of course, and I don't want to be uh, remiss and forget about the 2019 NBA draft. Good little class. We'll get into that a little later. But first, America, just uh, as I said, the, the award show was last night. Luka Doncic won the Rookie of the Year. Pascal Siakam, most the improved. The white James Harden. The Luka <laughs> with the step back. Uh, Pascal Siakam, of course, won the most improved. Uh, but a little the, the the Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks kind of took the cake and... They got the coach of the year, the GM of the year, and what, whether you like the decision or not, fortunately un, or unfortunately, Giannis, because I can't say his last name. Uh, I'm going to stick with Uncle Giannis. You can Ante Tacumpo. Oh, there you go. Nice. Ooh, that I was, was, that was, I was close to I was close. <laughs> See, I don't want to disrespect him, but. That's why he's quality control. Um, I want. I want. America to kind of close your eyes real quick, all right? I want to take you on a, a little journey. So I went back and I looked the past 20 years of all the MVPs, right? And every one of them, except for one, except for one, was either first or second place standing-wise. And one of the main narratives of this year was that in the NBA, the main reason that Giannis was uh, the quote, quote, the favorite to win it, obviously won it, was that he had the best team record-wise in the standings of the year. He was first place, first overall. So that gave him the the uh, upper hand on winning the MVP. Now, the only other time, the only other time that that uh, the best player or on the best team didn't win the NBA MVP for that year was 2017 with Russell Westbrook. In fact, his team was sixth place. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but what I do have a problem with is that you gave an excuse for at least one year for an extraordinary circumstance to happen, right? And so in this year, as in the past 20 years, the, the number one team, the best player on the number one team won it, right? But an extraordinary circumstance did happen. Now, I do want to say this. I cannot fault the guy for winning the championship. NBA reporters, NBA players, and also NBA uh, fans apparently get to vote on this, but not necessarily have too much say in it. But 
for the most part, all the NBA uh, reporters get the main vote. And most of them, of course, chose Giannis. So I went back and I looked at the um, past 20 years and all the MVPs that were um, all the way down to 2000, starting with Allen Iverson. And I started with the narrative of the best player on the best team usually wins the MVP. So I looked it up. First place, first place, first place, second place, first place, so on and so forth. Uh, starting with Allen Iverson, of course, Kobe Bryant, um, LeBron James, and Dirk Nowitzki. They all had a similar theme. And uh, again, they're all the best player on the best team, except for one year. That year happened to be 2017. And that year was Russell Westbrook. And he was placed, and his team was placed sixth, sixth in place. the entire Western <clears throat> Conference, at least. So they gave him that. But I, I was a proponent of that. And I said, the reason you should give it to him is because it was an, an extraordinary occurrence within the NBA history. And when you look back on, on the history of the game, a triple double had only been happened had only happened by one other player. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll give it to him. Again, it's an outlier. Again, we'll go back and all except for that year, we see the best player on the best team. So this year, looking at it, Giannis, of course, was the best player on the number one team in the NBA. The problem lies in the fact that we had another extraordinary circumstance, an extraordinary occurrence within the history of the NBA. And remember, I went back and I said the triple doubles, as far as an average is concerned, had only happened by one other player in the entire history of the NBA. Now, when you look at this and you look at, when you step back and you look at the, the, the catalog of the history of the NBA, what has happened this year is another one of those occurrences where a player has such a, a great statistical year that it's only happened one other year, one other time in the history of the NBA. And again, I'm not trying to bash Giannis when it comes to this, but uh, for all intents and purposes, this is that year that the best player on the best team shouldn't necessarily win this, uh, this, this award as far as the MVP is concerned. And I just want to like for America to close their eyes and just listen to these stats. First player with 2,800 points, 500 rebounds, and five assists in one year. First player ever. First player to average 36 points and over seven assists. First player ever. First in, uh, first in total points per game. First in three points made, field goals made, free throws made. Second in PPR, PER. Second in steals per game. Second in deflections per game. And this is important because he is so a uh, so-called a not a defensive player. James Harden doesn't play defense. All right. 36.1 points a game. Mm. That hasn't happened in this era, but other only one other time. And that was by Michael Jordan. Now, go. You may say Okay, Giannis had stats out of this world too. And it only hasn't happened but one other time with Shaquille O'Neal. But correct me if I'm wrong. Shaquille O'Neal's not better than Michael Jordan. So where's the barometer? Are we comparing ourselves to uh, Shaquille O'Neal and to fit the argument that Giannis is better? We say that he didn't have he had a season like Shaquille O'Neal. Mm. Or are we saying that Michael Jordan is the barometer and 
com- comparably, Harden is the the one that had a year like his. So at the end of the day, what are we really trying to say with this award? Because in my opinion, I think it's very hypocritical. Well, I, I, man, it just feels like the narrative keeps changing uh, as far as MVP, the MVP goes by um, who's the most popular, who's the most liked. Because, I, I mean, this whole season, um, the media has done everything they could to downplay James Harden's season. There's been so much hate. And it got to the point where people were even saying that the way he plays basketball um, is not the right way or it's a horrible way to play the basketball. But it was one of the most efficient ways throughout the whole season, especially based on the numbers you just said, John. So then it boils down to, like I ask everyone when they make these comments to me, do you just don't like him? Just tell me you just don't like James Harden. Because then it's easier to g- go past this whole debating. Because if we're going to talk numbers, we're going to talk about GOAT numbers. We're going to talk about Michael Jordan numbers. He just put up GOAT numbers, right? That's an ease that we can, that's real. Like numbers don't lie, Jay-Z. So the, 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 the thing I have an issue with is like, if, if you don't have a, an argument in the game and you're denying all these goat-like numbers because deep down inside you just don't like James Harden, then just say you just don't like James Harden. We can stop talking about that because I'm okay with that. I actually think that's the, exactly what it is. I think it, it's for the same reasons we don't think, even though West, Russell Westbrook has averaged every year since, a triple double. We don't consider that a great thing anymore because it's happened already once. We don't like his game too much, and I respect his game. I think it's 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 one of the most uh, he's hardest one of the hardest working players out in the game right now, but it's not conducive to winning basketball games. You know what bothers me the most is that honestly, this could be the, we could easily say that this was the first time in a long time that it should have been really super close. Like, if Giannis wins by, like, a couple of votes, then I, at least I know that everybody understands how important this, this, this man's season was. But literally, Giannis beats James Harden by 55 uh, first-place votes. Yeah, it wasn't even close. And I did, you showed me a graphic earlier. Maybe, uh, Qua, if you can pull it up. And you showed me a graphic of all the people that voted for Russell Westbrook in 2017, in 2017. With- and, and all those said, like I agreed, was the extraordinary season, mm-hmm. give it to him, right? Who was second place? James Harden. James Harden. All right, so we didn't give it to James Harden, who had a better record, right? Had a better team, right? And he actually averaged, he was second in point scoring and number one in assists in the whole, in the whole 11.2 right. in assists. So it was amazing. Right, right. So he, he, had, he had a great season. Yeah. Right? Better team, right? But... We all voted for Russell Westbrook, right, mm-hmm. for that extraordinary season. Now we go back to the same circumstance, same things are lining up the same way. And for whatever reason, it seems like James, uh, me, James Harden gets the shorter end of the stick because those people who voted for Russell Westbrook, who wasn't in first place, yeah. voted for Giannis, who was in first place, and their justification was Giannis, Best player, best on the Absolutely. best team. And if you go back and look at some of those players, I mean, some of those media outlets that voted for, for Westbrook then and then also voted for Giannis in um, 2018, 2000, I'm sorry, 2019, um, those are also a lot of, a lot of uh, media outlets that have a bias against James Harden and didn't really care for his game and had some, you know, um, critical... Uh, I guess you could say analysis towards his game overall, you know. So it, it, there you it, go. It, at the end of the day, like I said, it, it's not about. It it really is about a popularity contest, and right now, I mean, it's, they've been doing it the whole year, and it's and we've talked about this so much, and I've been so frustrated with having to defend James Harden like he's my brother. Um, even if he wasn't a Rockets, I would still defend him because. Numbers don't lie. And when, I mean, are, are we at a point now where it's not even about numbers? Should it just be about popularity contests? Like when you're running for president in high school and whoever's the most liked, even if they don't even have anything valid to bring to the table? I mean, don't get me wrong. Giannis is an amazing kid. He had an amazing se- season. And um, I really did appreciate his, you know, his, his acceptance speech. It was very heartfelt. But at the end of the day, 
I'm just saying. I'll say, I'll say this. The, and this is the last time I'm going to address this, but I, I, I really believe that this shows, that list that we, that we showed everybody, shows that there is a bias. And that's so frustrating because I, I don't like being the, the, the guy that calls out biases and I don't like trying to be that woe is me person. But if we're, we're calling a spade a spade, again, that list shows you everybody that damn near voted for Giannis voted for Westbrook. And, they, and it just fit the narrative that they needed to in order to, to, to justify their vote. And it, and it just it, it, I feel like I'm being uh, justified in saying that there's a bias towards him and it may be his game just to the fact that they don't like the way he plays just the fact that he's a he's a he's a player that that is basically what they call consider a ball hog or a iso player and all, that's all they play but correct me if i'm wrong you know the the object is to score more points in the team the object is to to uh put the basket in the ball and we scored at a higher clip and 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 then I think at least all but two teams. Well, that's what bothers me the most is that when people say he's a ball hog, I've seen that so much. And the thing is, he's one of the most willing passers there are in the game. Like if you're open, a man has a high basketball IQ, he'll pass the ball to you. And this is for somebody who averaged almost close to 12 assists in 2017. So that notion that he doesn't pass the ball, the thing is, is that the offense is set up to where the ball goes through James Harden. He determines based off of the defensive scheme um, of how he's going to basically address the defense, whether it's him step back, whether it's him going up for the layup or him passing it to his teammates. That's what he does. And it has been the most efficient offense the last two years. Right. There's no doubt in, There's no doubt about that. It, it, not even that, but then you, you have the, 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 the naysayers that say he doesn't play defense. He has definitely improved his defense the last couple of years. Listen, listen, is he the best defensive player on the court? No. I don't expect him to be. I just want the man to score. <laughs> right? And when he can play defense, play some damn defense. And he's done that. I mean, he was second in steals behind who? I don't know. Oh, Chris Paul? No, not Chris Paul. Paul who? George. Paul George. Second oh. behind Paul George. And he was also voted for Defensive Player of the Year. Matter of fact, I'm a little pissed off that James Harden didn't get no votes for Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> because at the end of the day, he also was number one in, in blocks at his position at shooting guard. Who, who, who won it? Uh, Rudy Gobert, right? Uh, yeah. And, Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Uh, I think P.J. Tucker was up for it, right? No, he didn't even get a vote. Wow. That, that's what, I don't know if you noticed it, but he also made a video when they announced uh, uh, Rudy. Well, he actually like made a little video. and, and there's, a little, there's a meme yeah. up there. Listen, P.J. Tucker should have definitely been, at least been in the top three for defensive player of wow. the year. Wow. He played. He, well, shit. I mean, six G foot six. Giannis uh, didn't even get any center. votes, and he was uh, nominated. He got votes. No, he didn't get. He. I, I think it was unanimous decision that it went to uh, Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Giannis got twenty five votes. Yeah. Giannis got twenty. Yeah, okay. He, he got, but what I will say is uh, that that meme is 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 sick. So uh, for those who are listening, he basically um, put up that all you got to do is cry. And you win Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> That's real talk, hey. honestly, man. Real talk. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, like Harden clearly put up some of the greatest numbers. I mean, he averaged 35 and 7. Um, and uh, I would go on and we can continue talking about the Houston, <laughs> Houston, I mean, about James Harden and his stats. But, uh, um, you know, guys, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, Hu the Houston Rockets uh, Twitter account beat us to, 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 to that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's something that we should definitely get into because uh, it's definitely become such a uh, well. Like, well, the well, the the Houston Rockets Twitter account said um, they well they pull up all the stats, right? They basically so immediately after they announced um, you know uh, Giannis winning MVP, of course you know uh, the Rockets congratulated, but then said they respectively disagreed. And they just basically started posting all the historical stats of James Harden. And then that's when chaos <laughs> started. The, you know, listen, um, you know, my thing about this is, un unfortunately, the tweet from the Rockets honestly came at a bad time, especially with everything that's been happening, right? Like Giannis just, and the reason I say this is that Giannis just won the MVP award, right? And he gave one of the most heartfelt speeches ever. The, the hey, part let me, let me let me stop you right there just real quick because I, I don't I don't I don't want to uh, over or um, 
I don't want to make it seem like I'm not supportive of Giannis, right? Yeah. I think he deserves it. I think he, he um, for all intents and purposes, you're right. When it when it comes to, it should have been a lot closer. should have been way closer. When, when we look at it. It should have been way closer. I would have been happy with the tie. You know when two boxes are really good? Yeah. And you basically say, you know what? A draw is fair. Ask, right? those, ask those fighters if they want a draw. They want to win. Right, that. right. No, listen. <laughs> listen. James Harden, if, if they would have told me today James Harden lost by four or five first place votes, that would have made sense. Right. I've been like, exactly. okay, there was a battle between historical right. numbers to best player, best team. I would have been like, eh, okay, that's cool. But to okay. lose by 50, 50 first right, place. Right, right, right. All right, so. so like, we'll come back to that. But let me ask you, did you watch the show? I did. I watched the last, I watched the ending because. I started to watch the intro of Shaquille O'Neal and said, fuck this, I'm not watching this shit. It was horrible. <laughs> it, Excuse it my was, language. It, it was pretty bad. Now, they've had a couple of shows that are good. And there's good moments within that. Like, Giannis was fabulous. I, great I moment, think especially great. The, the part with his dad. It was awesome, man. Right, right. And it, all his brothers. And, Emotional, um, man, for real. <clears throat> uh, if, if we could get that pulled up, that, you know, I, I'll tell you what. For when you look back on his career, and stuff. It's like, remember when um, uh, Kevin Durant came out and he's like, you know, y'all the real MVP and all that stuff. It's a classic, classic yeah, yeah, moments, yeah. classic stuff. But as a show in general, uh, I think it's unnecessary. <laughs> Do you think like it should be two two hours of well, okay, award so, shows? So from a fan and a person who likes like good TV, it was horrible. Like, I'd rather watch the BET Awards than that. That's how bad. And the BET Awards are pretty horrible. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah they've gotten they've gotten worse. I don't know. Somebody told me this, this year it's pretty decent. But they've had some really horrible, like, <laughs> like at this point, like, Nickelodeon Awards, I'm ready to watch than this. It, 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 it was just, it's just a bad thing. But from a marketing standpoint, think about how many people watch. The NBA still made money after the season was over with. So it still benefits them. Because beforehand, they didn't even have a show. Let me play devil's advocate. Yeah. Do you remember when Akeem Olajuwon won, uh, excuse me, lost the MVP to David, David Robinson? Robinson? Yeah. How dumb did that look? Really dumb. Right? Now, in a broad, very broad sense, the Raptors won the championship. The Raptors won in five games, in fact, over the Bucks. So, are, so hold on. You, <laughs> I hate to interrupt you. So are you telling me that the MVP should have gone to Drake? Come on, man. Drake? Well, he did a better job than Shaq. Best I ever had. They should have got Drake to do it. I don't know why they didn't get you. I don't know who chose it was a, Shaq. I, it was a, that one was a good show. I'm not going to lie. I know you, uh, You like, man, I'll tell you what. You, you got to get on that Drake bandwagon, bro. You Never. Do. You gotta, I respect you, it. He makes good music, but I'm not going to be like, oh, my God. Super fan. Oh, my God. No, no. Uh, he, he's, he should by himself with just the, the, the star power alone should get Kawhi Leonard back. I don't know. He might be going to Clippers, but <laughs> the the thing. Okay, so the thing is, since we're talking about music, the thing that that hit me off right off the bat um, is once the Giannis won um, the MVP award. Um, of course, the Rockets, like I said, tweeted out right, and as soon as they tweet, as soon as they tweet, as soon as they tweeted that out, um, there was definitely a social media storm. People felt that it was classless. People were just going in on the Rockets. This is kind of probably maybe one of the worst times ever. And, and, and from a marketing standpoint, me and Qual were talking about this earlier tonight, I would have liked if the Rockets PR would have like, you know what, Giannis just gave this really heartfelt like message. Maybe we should just kind of pull back a little bit. Maybe tomorrow we can say, say what, blase, blase. But they did it right then and there, right? So it, it, from from... So of course, as there's a social media storm, it becomes this mob on it was, on, on it, Twitter. We, we already it was pretty, knew though. So, but, we already but, knew. Yeah, but they but, had it in the back pocket. The I'm narrative sure was already. They already set. knew. There, but I mean, exactly. they, they were had it prepared. So somebody could have just said, "Don't send yet." They, but you do see what I'm saying? But and, they were ready. But here's the thing: what reminded me the most about this situation was when Kanye West came out <laughs> on the MTV Awards and uh, interrupted Taylor Swift and basically that was during a speech though. Ah, but it's right after this speech. It was like, to me, it reminded me so much of that. Because listen, we can all agree that at the moment, what Kanye West did was wrong, but he was not lying. <laughs> like, like Kanye West was on, you can't tell me nothing, 
type of thing. And pretty much, like, he felt that Beyonce had the best video. And in hindsight, when you go and look at both videos, Beyonce definitely had the best video. But at the time, it just looked tasteless. But like you just said, like you said earlier, right? Yeah. It's come down to a popularity contest. And that's exactly what the MV, uh, excuse me, the MTV Music Awards are. But no, the, what's the panel? Do you even know the panel? No, I don't even Have know. Have you? A what, is no, there no, no. a it's group just of about reporters? His, no, there's not. What? But okay, so when Giannis had this whole heartfelt speech, he, he instantly became like beloved. He became right. like an angel. Right. And that's the same way that Taylor people Swift. felt about Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, who is this guy interrupting? How is he still in the moment? And that's what it felt like because the social media has been going in on it. On in on us and and it's it's actually really sad to say to say the least because at the end of the day people are attacking James Harden like he's the one who put out the tweet and he didn't even put out the tweet matter of fact he's over in Philippines right now. Did you see uh, Maury show up on the red carpet with the James Harden T shirt on? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the Rockets, the Rockets don't. You can't fault for the Rockets for for um going and shooting hard for their their players and and at the end of the day we're we're over here we're taking shots at. From from, you know, said reporters uh, that are unfounded about Chris Paul and James Harden's relationship, unsalvageable, and you know we we've been run through the mud unfairly, unjustly, and at the end of the day, at, at, you know, we're over here we're protecting our guys, and Daryl Moore is out there, the Houston Rockets on Twitter ready. They they knew they knew it was what was gonna happen. And of course, they didn't know Giannis was gonna ball out like that, you know, on on stage. And again, that's a beautiful moment. Congratulations on the MVP and all. But, Congratulations, Giannis, man! You get but, a good um, season. You, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go for our guys at the end of the day. I mean, I definitely I definitely feel like the Rockets did a great job of of representing James Harden. Um, I just feel like there's really no true appreciation for James Harden this season and for what he's done. And maybe it won't be until 10 years from now when people realize how James Harden really changed the game of basketball and how he, he's adapted to the rules and play calling and how, how, he's, how he's turned that into his advantage. But at the end of the day, I mean, the only thing the left for the Rockets to do when James Harden is to win a title. Like, uh, management has to do their part. James Harden has to do their part. Um, there, there's no more whining, no more bitching, no more stats. Um, no more excuses, and most importantly, no more tweeting. We just got to go out there and win, right. and maybe that'll solve all well, this shit. There's a, I heard a little rumor. We'll get into it a little bit later, but you know, we might, we might be on the right, right track. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Jimmy, uh, I did want to point out we got a little uh, eighth wonder dome foam. When's the last time we drank this, Chris? Uh Astros World, Astros World Series win, man. So it became one of those things where I would only drink this beer the, the first pitch when the Astros like pitch. And that became a tradition throughout the whole playoffs into the World Series. And yeah, man, I mean, this is this is a really good beer. This is uh, you know, throwback. Shout out, uh, Eighth Wonder. Eighth Wonder. Let's get into it. So every show we do a little uh spotlight on on local beers here in Houston and uh we've been uh, I want to I want to you know we've been on this Buffalo Bayou kick and it, it, great people great beer uh hopefully eventually we'll get out there to to their beer, brewery and uh check it out and I would love to have a show out there actually I would love to have a show at 8th Wonder and um pretty much any local beer brewery that would will have us and and uh We'll see what we can do later on down on mm. down the line, and um, but one of the reasons I bought this is some symbolic in a sense of the Astros, and uh, I was talking about the other day how they have the slogan now, "Take it back," and like I said, this became symbolism for our 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 championship years. So whenever I drink this, I reminisce. Of course, it was just last couple of years ago, but still, it's always good to think about the good times, good times. I reminisce. Uh, but I really believe that we got something special coming up. Mm. Let me ask you something. Where Do you know where you were when Jordan Alvarez got called up 
and hit his home first home run? It was June 9th on a Sunday. I was busy folding clothes, <laughs> and my wife called me in right when I'm playing. No, but um, yeah, I remember actually uh, uh, watching a game on uh, Facebook, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I actually was his second at bat, and he he I mean he he killed it for all all you know um, for everything that was on that ball. He killed it. It was pretty exciting because the hype that came from from him in the minor leagues. Do you remember? The home run race between Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and those years that were all about the home runs. It was a great time. It was some of the most exciting baseball I've ever seen. And for America, it was the best baseball they had ever seen up until that point. Yeah. Baseball was on an all-time high. Uh, I, I, I guarantee you that in the mainstream, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, everybody could basically know who those guys were. And since then, of course, through PEDs, uh, the game has kind of faded away. Between 18, 25-year-olds, NFL's number one. Basketball's right there behind it. And a little further down, baseball basically has the old, oldest fans. And there's a lot, a lot of things that go into that and the reasoning. But baseball moved away from the home run era, right? At least for the couple of past years. And that's one of the things that always kind of, I was, I was always confident, but I was kind of scared about the Astros when it came to the 2017 World Championship uh, team. They didn't necessarily have a home run hitter. They didn't have somebody that would go for 40, 50, 60 home runs who growing up watching baseball, we had to have. Everybody could hit, hit for average and everybody could get a home run, but not necessarily we would wait on that home run expecting that one player to hit it for us to, to send it to the next round to, to, uh, to, to win an appropriate game. So I always felt like we were missing something. But then I always felt better about it because teams like the Yankees are nothing but home run hitters. Case in point, 25 games in a row. Great. I'm happy for you. Whatever you think that's going to win you the title, keep doing that. But for the past couple of years, Astros and now last year, Boston, they didn't need that. Right. So we still have basically – the nuts and bolts of our team. But now, seven home runs in 12 games, Manchild, El Hombre Nino, six foot five, 230 pounds, Cuban, a Cuban national, has jumped on the Astros scene. He's a bad, bad, bad boy. By way of Round Rock Express, oh. 23 home runs in the minor leagues. To begin the season. Did you know that's basically would lead the league right now had he been called up at the beginning of the season? Oh, You'd have 30 home runs right now. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like he would have 30 home runs, but that's not major league pitching. So the main thing was could he adjust to major league pitching? Seven home runs in 12 games. I think he's adjusted. Yeah. For the 12 games that he's been on, he's number one on our team on batting. He's number one on base percentage. He's number one in slugging percentage. This guy is a bad man. I'm telling you, he's a bad man. And you know who he reminds me of? And I'm sorry to say this because I don't like comparing anybody to him because I think he's the greatest baseball player of all time. I don't care what anybody says. Stat for stat, point for point, shot for shot, home run for, uh, for home run, arm for arm. Barry Bonds is the greatest baseball Preach. player I have ever seen. Preach. Lace up a pair of baseball cleats. Preach. Ever. Barry Bonds. Now, Babe Ruth was great, mm. but Barry Bonds is the greatest baseball player. PEDs are not, right? I'm sorry. He was great. Before and he was great after PDs. But do you, I remember 
when I was in, um, I want to say high school, we went to the, 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 the season that he hit 73 home runs. He was going to tie, I believe, Mark McGuire's 70 home runs in one season, right? I remember going to the stadium and watching that game. And every at-bat was on TV. Every at-bat, it didn't matter what was on the TV. It could have been a basketball game. It could have been a college football game. People stopped whatever they were doing to watch this guy bat, right? And it may not happen right away. It may not happen for another five years. But this guy, Jordan Alvarez, Air Jordan Alvarez, is going to make people stop and watch. Guarantee you. I know it's 12 games into the season, but I'm telling you now, if he does not become somebody that you watch on TV to see every at bat because he's either going to break a record or he's, he's just that must-see TV on a baseball game, the only reason he doesn't make it is because of some outside circumstance. But if any... For any reason, nobody gets to him. He, does, he's, he puts his head down and he goes to work. This may be the next coming of Barry Bonds, the greatest baseball player we have ever seen. From a hitting standpoint. Right, right. Because his weakness, though, all the hype that's on this man is that um, they're, they're in conflict because he, they don't know where to put him when it comes to the, the field. He's not a good outfielder. Um, doesn't look like he's a very good first baseman. So that's the struggle right now. Luckily, they can put him at his, as a DH, but um, he's going to have to improve in those areas. See, this is the only weakness that I feel like the Astros have. Okay, so, of course, when we say we go to the World Series, right? Say, for, for whatever reason, it's Astros versus the Dodgers, right? Name, my, name the outfield. At home, outfield. This is outfield. Oh man, we got plenty of outfielders. I know you know, that's, that's a problem. We have too many stacked outfielders. Like we might even have to trade some of them just so we. So Mareznik. Mareznik took Reddick. Uh, Reddick. Springer. Springer. Right. Brantley. Brantley. See, see, this is where we start. Kemp. I mean, he's a badass yeah, too. No, Kemp's not going to start. He no, won't, no, he'll never he, start behind. Bef- see, no, no, but here. that, but they, but that's just it. That's what I love about Hinch is that he. He puts players based off of matchups, so he'll throw in him. It, that's another thing too that I love about him is that he is using his depth to rest his other players. Right. So when you have the ability to put someone like Tony Kemp, he changes the game because of his speed. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, one hundred percent. So like, that, I mean, just but think we have about, another one, Straw. I'm, I'm just I, that. That's still crazy, and he can put him at shortstop too. He can play that and even second base. So I mean, the depth's unreal. You're right. Not only did it add to our strongest weakness which was a uh, designated hitter uh, because uh we all can agree taylor white doesn't need to be doing that position anymore i, I, I unfortunately he did I hit a grand we, slam recently I, I, so right good, good, kudos for him mayfair mayfair he may not he may not make it i don't think he's gonna make it no, uh, I, agree I, I i i like i like him i like his story and everything like that but when it looks when you look at the the overall roster on, on the team i think it's 25 people uh i don't think he makes it I think Straw or Kemp, one of them has to go, and I think Kemp, because he's a veteran and he makes more money, wouldn't wouldn't uh, get called down. Um, but then when that was at home, I gave you that scenario at home. What about when we're on the road and we don't have a DH? We can't have a DH. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that's going to be the challenge. And it, it, here's the thing, man, like, uh, quick note: The team WRC plus was one thirty two. That's first in the league, first in the league and beyond the nineteen twenty seven Yank- Yankees, respectively. Um, and that was one hundred twenty overall. But in the last month, the team has only hit one hundred five, and that's eighth in the AL. Um, and it would have been even worse if it wasn't for Ariel or Dan Alvarez. So he is definitely already at a component to this team. He's actually helped us. But the good news that we have for all you Astros fans is that. I mean, George Springer is back. And what, good. what better time to get him back than right now when we're about to get into the heat of the season? Well, everybody was 
kind of a little down on losing seven games in a row. Now we're we're two up now. We just won two in a row. Uh, shout out to the Garrett Cole for the win tonight. Uh, we won five one. Um, but for for that big losing streak, we're still first in the division, mm-hmm. and only two games, but uh, two games off the best record in the league, and one and a half off the best American record in the league. Yeah, I mean, despite that rough pass, you actually still hold a six and a half lead over the Texas Rangers. Right. I mean, which is still substantial considering. But now we're still get, we're starting to get everyone back. Exactly. We got the best we lead knew, off hitting. We we knew that straw was gonna break at some. Yo, point. absolutely. I mean, we bring back the best best lead off hitter in baseball, George Springer, who's putting up ridiculous numbers prior to getting injured. MVP candidate candidate numbers, which still have significance as it plays right now. We got Atuve back, and he's starting to look good. Right. You're forgetting about one person. Mm-hmm. You, you forgot we still got Diaz, who was the number one backup coming off the bench. I mean, Diaz, yeah, I mean, he's about to come <laughs> back too, man, which is crazy. And then McHugh is coming back too soon, and he was hurt. I don't know if I'm a Astros. I, I know the Astros because we're so we, we live in Houston, but I just feel like we have a stacked team, and the way we've drafted and put this team together, we it's a it's a point where. We have too many good players. I mean, we still got Tucker out there in 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 the minor leagues, who's put you know who's who's Matt, who's you know putting up ridiculous numbers. Um, and here's the great thing about all this depth is that you know one thing that we notice about the seven game uh, losing streak, especially against the Yankees, is that right now our biggest weakness is probably um, our bullpen. So we've had some issues with that, um, and so you can use these pieces to go out there and get. Extra Who added. Who would you pitches. give up? <laughs> Who would you give up? It's depending on what I'm. It's depending on what they're gonna give up. You see what I'm saying? Like that's how I feel right now. I feel like see, I have the ability. I don't think we have to, to give up. What do you mean? Oh, right, exactly. This one we have the ability. To I don't bargain. think we have to give up positional players necessarily. We could, we could have sweetened the pot, but the way we draft and what we do, we could just give a prospect and say, "Hey, this guy is good," and basically word is bond because we've produced so well. That's just in the best position um, possible, especially with the the uh, the role of injuries and then the losing streak. They're still in like a great place. Most teams, if they suffered what we suffered, losing their three, four, five best players, their season would be over. But what the Astros did was find a way to win. Right. And they utilized their strengths and and hid their 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 weaknesses. You know what I mean? Can so. you can can you think back? At any point during any point during the the uh, managerial career of AJ Hitch, where he he's done a better job. I mean, AJ Hitch is the truth, man. Him in in the in the front office with Luno. Um, I mean, they just know what they're doing. I, I mean, just just I never ever. You know, of course, you have those baseball purists that will get on like sports radio and sit there and say Hinch should have done this and Hinch should have done that, but I mean, the man's winning games. So, you know, that's why you're calling into a radio and not actually coaching a baseball team. I mean, Hitch knows what he's doing, and I have all respect for him. And I just feel like he knows what he – I know he just knows his players so well, and he knows how he can explain their talents. And that's what's – that's basically how they've been winning, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm highly, highly impressed. Once again, Astros still in first place. Uh, 5-1 win tonight. Two in a row now. Let's put another five games in a row Knock this uh, hole. Jordan had a n- another RBI too as well. Oh, I know. Man. Let me scrub. Man, <laughs> boys. Just, oh. I'm telling you, this guy is the truth. I don't know. I, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you could copyright or legally or, or, or they have trademark restrictions, but everybody's trying to give him different nicknames for whatever reason. And, you know, they say hombre niño, uh, there's something, man child or whatever, because he's. Sick. Six foot five, two thirty. Right? Twenty. They just turned twenty two. Twenty two in the yeah, majors. They're not lying sometimes about the age, man. You know. But Air Jordan is just so synonymous with with anything that you recognize as as as, as greatness. Yo, Jumpman needs to get on it, man. Right now, I, I <laughs> right? posted that on Instagram. Right? They, they need to get on it. They need to go ahead and market him. He needs to be like straight up in the ju- Jumpman baseball. Um, you know, team and have his own cleat. I mean, can you imagine him like rocking like the uh, the 11s and like 
the <laughs> oh you know what I'm wow and the and some, I'm just saying. 11 cleats that'd be Dude. sick that'd be really good um but yeah man like i i just i just hope they get that trademark uh like you said jordan onto it uh the, this guy if we if if jordan brand or nike or whoever has him under under their 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 um marketing team or whatever they he he could really really bring a lot of eyeballs back to baseball man and again i'm going to tell you this houston has just a great reflection of players that match how diverse the city of Houston is. But I'm going to tell you something. This is my prediction. This is my bold prediction. Um, I actually feel like with adding Springer back and Atuve being back, I really feel like at the end of the day that Bregman is going to have the best season out of all of them at the end of the season. I think by bringing those guys back, um, pitchers can't pitch around him. Um, they're going to actually have to pitch to him. And the one thing I know about Bregman is he has the ability um, to execute. And so I'm looking forward to uh, the stare downs. The stare down, man. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Bregman is going to be the face of baseball. I'm telling you right now. Guaranteed. Tyler White did the stare down when he hit the grand slam. It was kind of corny. I thought he was looking at a hot dog. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. All right. So um, I, I, I brought it up, you know, uh, it, it's so relevant in, in our times today with uh, women in a workplace and, and how you should treat them, sexual harassment, uh, and just overall respect for women. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's been a hot topic. And one of the socially hot topics, I guess, if you want to you wanna, um, say, LeVar Ball went on first take the other day. And had a conversation with Stephen A. and and um, Molly Kiram, Max Kellerman, <sighs> and I wanna I wanna play this clip real quick. Go ahead, go yeah, ahead. LeVar, before I, I get back to him, Lavar, can I switch gears with you for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. Okay. <laughs> Let's stay oh focused Lord. here. Go ahead. All right. Um, so let me ask you, Chris. In light of all that, in light, in light of everything you you know. Uh, how the co- corporate yeah. work co- corporate world is. Yeah. What do you feel? What do you think? Listen, um, th- this is a, uh, you know, I- I've always stood by this. I am a feminist. Um, I feel like men have gotten away with so much in the work, f- in the workplace, not only just with pay, but most importantly, just by a lot of the comments that are said and some of the sexual innuendos that's, that's said by, by men. Um, and they always get a pass. And of course, um, you know, with the Me Too movement, um, with just so many women feeling empowered to actually come out and stand up, um, it's actually really changed the way men um, are having to handle themselves and hold themselves accountable when they're amongst, um, you know, the opposite sex. Um, And obviously in this clip, I mean, he obviously was being inappropriate. And... The crazy thing about this is the fact that he actually tried to turn it around and said that her mind was actually the person that was no. I, I, was in the I get you know I, mean? I get the whole instance of blaming the victim. I get that, and that that could be this right, but no. I do think that maybe maybe it was a too quick to call it what it what everybody thinks it was was a sexual in the window because i was trying to try to say it like this if he was talking to my sister or he was talking to my my mom or grandmother or just anybody you could also say that was a show of respect say it's say you're, you're we're having a conversation and your grandma comes back and she says hey i'm sorry to interrupt you, you don't mind if i interrupt you and and uh I say, of course, you can interrupt me anytime, right? Mm-hmm. And it's actually a show of respect. I, I, I listen for for whatever for whatever reason you you want to interject or you want to um, interrupt. Maybe inter- interrupted is a little harsh of a word, but say you want to interject, and I respect her and I hold her opinion on a higher level. I'll be like, of course, mm-hmm. you know, this is a conversation. I tell 
Kawhi all the time. This is a conversation that everybody's included, you know, and they're on a platform where they give their opinion and everybody's included. This is where men get in trouble because, why? and this is why I'm, I'm explaining to you why we get in trouble. It, even if what you're saying is true, it's her reaction, how she t- felt and how she took that comment. And the way it was said to her. Right. It resonated something with her and she felt yeah, something about it. Yeah, you saw her pause. It. Right. And she was bothered by it. So it, even if, if we do not mean any harm to some of the things that we might say, as a, as a human being and as somebody that's being accountable and responsible, if someone feels uncomfortable, you need to acknowledge that. Right. So the best thing he could have done was... As soon as he saw her reaction, because everyone, even 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 um, Stephen A. Smith was like, "Hey, come on now, you know, like, you know, even exactly." He, so, but he did say, "Well, no, nah, let's go, let's keep on so going." I, I just like the thing about it is, Le- Levar Ball has a, a complete history of putting his foot in the mouth. But I don't, I don't want. Li- listen, let's just say, let's give him the benefit of the doubt, because everyone right. deserves the benefit of the doubt, right? Even Levar Ball. Um, let's just say that he was like you're saying, being respectful again. It's not about what he felt. It's about the way he made her feel. Right. And you could obviously see that she felt extremely uncomfortable. And he should acknowledge that after the point of. And, 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 and not try to save face and put it on her. Right. And I just and, feel like and this, and this really afterwards, he did say that, uh, I think you were talking about that, but he did say that maybe her mind was in a gutter. If she's thinking that way, you know. And even so if that means was, he put both his feet in his mouth. In exactly. That case. Yeah, because yeah, that's why, you know, like, I, I could see that. And I could see, because you think about it from this perspective. And, you know, like, I'm all for, like, women's rights and uh, against sexual harassment or whatever. But, you know, I do believe that sometimes that, and just, and, and I don't blame it, but there is a double standard. Because you just think of it this way. Like, what if what if she had said a comment like that towards him or towards, another uh, like, a male counterpart. Co- like counterpart, right? Would it have been taken the same way? Probably not, right? Because, I mean, how social, how kind of like the, the social cues and everything against against males is kind of like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, you know, like we're almost like used to it. Like, it's just like playful talk, right? If a girl does that to a male, right. now it's like, oh, okay, like that's cool. You can joke about it. But then, you know, it's what Chris is saying, though, is is hitting it like right on the nose. It's not about like the intent that you had behind it. Because how she it's it's how it's, it. it's how it's perceived, and it gets to a point where yeah, you, you got to acknowledge it. It's like hey, well, he might not have necessarily meant that, even though I think we all know that he did. But it's up to him to be a man and you know, be like, yo, like, see, well, I'm I, sorry, but, but I'm sorry fact, you took it that way. Right. I didn't mean it that way, but I'm sorry yeah. that you felt that way. You know? it and it's like face. okay, I'm like all right, I'd respect him if he said that, but it's like you know, he didn't even do that. I was like, yo, like, see, I see, I agree with you on that point and i agree with you on that point same point but i i can't i cannot sit here and say that that was his intent but for 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 everything above all exactly what you guys uh iterated in the first place is the fact that you know you can call somebody out their name you can call somebody this and that and at the end of the day if that person's offended that person's offended and it's your, it's your, if you care about that person, it's your responsibility or, or, you know, as a, as a, as a moral, um, person in society. Yeah, it's it's not the time to get defensive. It's right. not about being right or wrong. Right. It, 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 here's the thing. For the last hundred years, men have been able to dictate the intent. Okay. Now we're in a place. Just like the, the whole Redskins thing. It's in a place in the last couple of years that women actually are empowered to stand up and, and let's be real. Let's be real here. We have been in workplaces where we have seen other men say and do inappropriate things, right? right? We're like, damn, that's crazy. Um, and many of us have even walked away. And a lot of us hadn't even stand up for those women and had to deal with that. Think about how many women have had to just go along with the dictation of, of what the man's perspective and intent is. Right. And I think that, that now, I think that it's forcing all of us to be socially aware about the way we come across and it's it's and it's and it is true what they say it's not what you say it's how you say it and we just got to be careful um and and again i'm trying not to be biased because personally i can't stand lavar ball i think that he has done more damage for his sons his talented sons than 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 than, uh he's done good um i think that that this man alone and after we've argued about this plenty of times 
I have a talented son. I do not believe that the father should outshine the son. The father should always be in the shadows. And for whatever reasons, LeVar always has to be the center of attention. And it hurts not only his boys, but the brand. And, and again, this man never says sorry for any of the ridiculous things that he says. Um, in the beginning, I thought it was him trolling. But when it comes down to it, this man just loves to hear himself talk. He loves to see himself on camera. And this man just feels himself too much. And at the end of the day, he's not the one with talent. He's not the one that's in the NBA. He's not the one that has the ability to go into the NBA and make something out of himself. All he is is just an idiot that keeps putting his fucking mouth and putting his fucking foot in his mouth. Right. And it's ridiculous. It's not. I can't. You can't blame him. It's not him that's putting a camera in his face. It's not him that 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 commands all. Yeah, this but stuff. it's him saying the dumb shit that he does. Right. But hey, now. ESPN is facing backlash because they put a for your 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 words are effing idiot, you know, in front of a camera. And they not only that, they give them they have him as a guest on the first take numerous times, not just once, not just twice. And every time he goes on there, he says the stupidest, most ridiculous things you could ever imagine. Well, he's been right about LeVar Ball. Who? <laughs> uh, I mean, excuse me, Lonzo Ball. What about him? No, number two pick in the draft. He also said he was going to play with the Lakers right. forever. All his sons were going to play on the Lakers. And now he's <laughs> exactly. saying because That's they've traded point. the best player ever that the Lakers will never, ever win a championship. That's my, uh. Listen. Don't you agree with that part, though? Uh, <laughs> well, any idiot, could, any, any idiot could predict that. It doesn't take, a, it doesn't take a, but a whistle and some marbles to actually predict that. But here's the thing. LeVar Ball again. Um, he's done more damage for the brand of the uh, Ball family than he is. And he's actually in a place right now where he's becoming Trump-like, where he just needs to shut up, stay quiet, and let his boys play basketball. And it's crazy because when you hear Lonzo Ball talk, he's so humble. He's actually a good kid. Literally. And it makes me feel bad for him. His dad's just a complete embarrassment. Imagine if that was your dad. Yeah, that'd be kind of tough. I'm not going to lie. That would be a tough, tough, uh, tough um, situation. But... Don't worry, Let Josh. Me, you'll never get that from me. I, to, to close this, right? Uh, uh, I think we're pretty much on the same page, right? Uh, all except for the intent. Uh, I don't think his intent was where you guys think it was, but whatever, we can have that. But we all agree on the fact that that he should have uh, he should have manned up and said, you know what? Sorry if you took it that way, or sorry my intention weren't that wasn't that way. You, you, he flipped it on her. The 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 um the the victim was at fault here. Yeah, apparently. According to him, but here's here's one thing. Right now, ESPN said all the right things, said done all the right things, had Molly Cairns back. Uh, I never if if ESPN has this guy back on, and he never apologizes, right publicly, because this is a public platform. That's one thing. If you do something in a public forum, in a public situation, for everybody to see. Be man enough to apologize and apologize in a public forum, in a public situation. So if he never does that and ESPN allows him back onto that show or any show on any uh, platform programming that they, they have, then I think it's all for show. It's all hollowed words that they've, they've, they've put out there. Don't you agree? NBA Awards, right. Um, I mean, listen, ESPN has gotten further away from true analysis and true, like, sports journalism. It's been a lot more about the the uh, the, the trolling and the ridiculous uh So you're telling me outtake. his act sells and they're going to have him back on it? I wouldn't doubt it. See? That's my point. What's that? It's I mean, that's, that's the whole thing behind LeVar Ball, man. He's just... He's he's like the, the true uh, embodiment of like there's no such thing as bad press. That's that's Le- Levar Ball. Well, in a nutshell, there's bad press when you have major inve- uh, investors and in, in, in people who buy into ESPN are saying they're they're threatening that they're gonna you know drop their uh, sponsorship just because you have somebody who obviously um, seems to come across as as being you know a sexual harasser of women. I mean, listen. You, you, we're in a point right now where money talks at the end of the day. 
Um, you can always find another idiot to bring on 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 the. Hey, that's my point. I mean, man, hopefully they're they're, bring, they're out there, right? Hey, John, hopefully, <laughs> hey, they'll hey, bring us on there. Hopefully, they bring. Let's go say. Hopefully, they bring us on there, man. ESPN. So, oh, man. so one of the reasons I got dome foam today is we're gonna try a new segment, basically, and it's quick hits, uh, and we're gonna call it off the dome in oh. reference to not only dome foam but. What they reference is actually down outside across the street, Astrodome. Where the, where the best football pl- team ever to play for the city of Houston, the Houston Oilers played at. There you go. Shout out. There you go. Shout Love out you, Houston Oilers. Again, eighth one in the mm-hmm. world. Uh, I think it's next so, to NRG. I don't know. So uh, one of the things, one of the topics is, uh, go ahead, take it from here, Paul. So before we completely get off LeVar Ball, I just want to say something. <laughs> Real quick, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't help but notice every time I look at him, uh, I only see Baraka from Mortal Kombat. Oh hell yeah, that is Ooh. a good point. Baraka from Mortal yo, Kombat. Yo, the, the, yo, the, the, the yo, you ever? Yeah. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, man. They even got the teeth right too, man. Jesus. Yo, that's yo. That's straight up. Finish him. I think. Right, a, right. I think there's a new Mortal Kombat game out too. I need. Dude, that's that's yeah. Fun. There actually that's is ridiculous. one, man. That's funny. We need we need to hop on that, but uh. So yeah, man. Sorry, I just, nah, it's <laughs> all good, bro. That's all good. That's Baraka. a hey. That's mm-hmm. a way to segue into our first ever off the dome. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's see. Uh, well, you know, we did talk about the NBA awards. Uh, why don't we do some quick hits on the uh, or the uh, off the dome? Talk about the the draft real quick. And uh, what you guys think about the uh, the draft? How that turned out? I was I was saying earlier. That I love the way the draft is set up, uh, but I don't get to see the real players per se out immediately after draft uh, if they're not like one, two, or three in the lottery, right? Like say uh, Zion, you know he's gonna start day one. R.J. Barrett probably gonna start day one. Uh, John ja Morant. So these guys I know, and then I follow them through the NBA NCAA tournament, Final Four, all that stuff, right? But once it gets down to it, unless they're super famous for uh, other reasons than just basketball or whatever, um, like, for instance, Bo Bo, Manu Bo's son, I know him because he's super tall, right? Played nine games at Oregon. Plus, he has one of the greatest names of all time, Bo Bo. I just think shit's tired. <laughs> and then um, Taco Fall, right, out of UCF. Another great name. Right. And the only reason I know him is because he, was, he said he wasn't going to let Zion dunk on him. Right. And it's because I was watching Zion, but I can't necessarily. And it's not um, not me not being a fan of basketball. What it is, is they're not mainstream. And, and not that not that I can't pay attention to anything outside of mainstream, but it's not going to be relevant for another two or three years. Like Pascal Siakam didn't know anything about him up until this year or a little bit last year. Great player, obviously, most improved of the year. Uh, Giannis had a couple of years before he had a he 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 became who he was. Yeah, that's true. You know, so don't get me wrong. I'm going to watch the NBA, and I'm gonna watch the NBA draft for the first hour, maybe. For and the, I love for the, the first, interviews for the first uh, four or five picks. <laughs> I love the interviews, but. You're a bigger college football fan than I am. You know more about the uh, the the recruits and the the five star athletes coming into town. I don't know, but sometimes you know people that go in the fourth or fifth round of the NFL draft. Yeah, I barely know anybody in the NBA at, in the second round. Uh, listen, here's the one thing that 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 stood out the most to me about the uh, NBA draft. Everybody that we knew, as far as the order they were going to get draft, got drafted. Um, we we saw the um the passionate and very emotional Zion and I thought it was awesome, especially paying homage to his mom. Oh, that's amazing. And it just makes me think about like Josh and his mom. Um, just the importance of having a good mother behind you, backing your dreams. Um, we, we learned that, you know, RJ Barrett can speak French, which was pretty cool, and he he's ready to take on New York. And I, I if, the, if there's anybody that has like that that I guess that the word I hate this word, swag to take on the horrible New York Knickerbockers. What does swag mean, Chris? 
uh, it means when you just have that flair of just like energy and like you just have that confidence vibe that vibe yeah anyways <laughs> um but the thing that was really what i don't like about the nfl draft i mean i mean the nba draft um is the fact that um there were so many trades and so the players had to come out in a team hat even though they knew that wasn't the team that they were in. So it doesn't even make fucking sense. Yeah. Like, so like, like, and, and I guess because of stupid NBA rules, they have to come out in that hat, even though like literally seconds before they were traded. Well, didn't Kobe Bryant go into a, a Charlotte Hornet? That's what hat? I'm saying. It's the <laughs> stupidest thing ever. Like Never if you get drafted by the Bucks, but they trade you away to the Clippers, you probably want to keep that Bucks hat on, you know, like, like there were so many trades, and I guess based off of of the trade and and when they can come official, I just think that's just out of like like who made these rules up that they can't fix that. Like if you get drafted, you should be taking pictures and the team hat that you were truly drafted by. Okay, done. Sorry, no, it's all good. Keep it real, Qua. Let's go. Uh, just real quick, who who has the best team? Who better record? John Morant, R.J. Barrett, Zion. Zion, man, Pelican's gonna be deep, man. Oh, you think so? All right, we'll go. They make the playoffs. Yep. Whoa, big, big, big. Uh, big Dark, listen. All right. <laughs> Next hit. I was gonna argue and say Morant, but he don't have it. He, well, they, 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 uh, they've lost a lot of key players, man. Yeah. Well, record, Definitely not record the Knicks. it now for when I'm right. In- ah, <laughs> beer, like bet, beer, <laughs> bet. Here we go. Uh, all right, so uh, y'all see those uh, those billboards uh, of of Kawhi? They're trying to trying to get him uh, in uh, L.A. Ooh, so they they got one for the Clippers and one for the Lakers, and it said uh, the one for the Lakers I think said it said King of the <laughs> North, but they crossed it out and it said King of SoCal. I'm sorry, I thought LeBron James was the king. Right, right. Mm, bad marketing. I obviously they oh, don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, in no, LA. that's for the Clippers. So. Kawhi the Clippers hashtag Kawhi, Kawhi to LAC uh, King of the King of the North slashed out the North part SoCal and then the one for is that the Laker one or just no, some Clipper, random it's one? a Clipper Nation oh it did bottom. yeah they're both Clippers oh wow because I heard the the Lakers are trying to get them too listen Kawhi Leonard's not going to the Lakers Kawhi Leonard Wait, stays is he going in Toronto to the Clippers no? honestly. I think he's going to Clippers. I think he, he Clippers. Th- there was already rumors that he wanted to go to Clippers right. from the jump. Right. And he, because he didn't want to play with LeBron. He doesn't want to play with LeBron. And honestly, I, for all you Laker fans out there, you guys should be excited and happy about who you got. There is a lot of players that don't want to play with LeBron. So Kawhi, where does he go? My gut instinct still says Clippers. He's going to Clippers? He's going to Clippers. He doesn't stay with Toronto. And actually, I actually think the Clippers would be a pretty, pretty they, start, they, they got a good team there, man. Who? The Clippers? Yeah. Okay. If you say they so. They got the greatest six men of all time. So Clippers, Kawhi got his Clippers. Kevin Durant, what does he do? He's going to New York. Really? Yeah. Uh Kyrie Irving. Where is he going? He's going to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, man. Brooklyn, <laughs> man. So you're gonna have Kyrie at Brooklyn and then Kevin Durant at the, on the New York Knicks? At this point, the Brooklyn Nets have way more talent and have a road to more success than the Knicks, unfortunately. All right. I, 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 I disagree with you. RJ Barrett's going to be a beast. Listen, I'm telling you. Biggie, 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 give me one more chance. I'm telling you right now, he's going to Brooklyn. Imagine this. Say, say, say he decides, clip, I mean, excuse me, he decides the Knicks over the Brooklyn. Kyrie Irving, R.J. Barrett, Kevin Durant, 2020, not 2019, 2020. That team is a beast of a team right there. Honestly, I actually believe what you're saying, but I just don't want, like, the Knicks are such a poorly ran team. I know. With one of the worst owners. I know. The way he treats fans. You're right. I don't want any success for them. And personally, I wish Durant actually stayed in Golden State. That was the third K, I don't want to say, in the succession. But there's there's one more K. Kimba Walker? No. Oh, Kimba. Yeah. I heard he's going to uh was it LA? I've heard. Well, LA. this is what they're saying. They're saying that he's that he that they're trying to put in the press that he's willing to take a pay cut in order to go over to the Los Angeles Lakers because Los Angeles Lakers can't give him a max contract. Here's my thing. Um They can't? They can't. 
We sign and trade. They oh, guess what? They don't have nobody to trade. <laughs> it, the whole team's on the Pelicans. Pelicans. You know Listen. who can trade though? Who? The Rockets. Nah, I don't want Kimber Walker though. No, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm, I just brought Kimber Walker up, but you're not you're not following me. So uh, ESPN, uh, little little tidbit for you. Oh, at mm. Woj at ESPN, um, on ESPN, excuse me. Reported that the Rockets are going to make a push for the one and only Jimmy Buckets, aka Jimmy Butler, because I like Jimmy Buckets better than Jimmy Butler. No offense to his last name, but still, Jimmy Buckets, Tom. aka Tom Ball, but really Houston. So yeah, so the what, what the Rockets have um, have really pushed, and I, I think it's borderline uh, tampering, in my opinion. Uh, so the Rockets want to push. To get Jimmy Butler, but the only way they can get Jimmy Butler is through a sign and trade. Through a, shot, through a through a sign and trade is exactly right. Now, of course, the the Sixers could just say, "Okay, we're just offer you max five years, one ninety. Yeah, I, I, it's like five years, one ninety. So the most that the Rockets could do, even through a sign and trade, is four. I want to say four years, one forty, I believe. Um, and they could do four years, one forty. Which actually would the the amount the four years would actually be more money in Houston than it would be in Philadelphia because of state taxes. Good point. Boom. So he his hometown is Town Ball, which is a subdivision basically of Houston. And he could make his money stretch longer within four years span, right? And be, in my opinion, on a better team. Oh, absolutely. Well, listen. Uh, obviously, um, the 76ers are in trouble. And by the way, it's not tampering if it is, if it's trade discussions. And he looks like, uh, from, from all accounts, uh, Jimmy Butler has actually already opted out of his contract. Yeah. 100%. So, so it, it is technically. No, he turned down his player option. That's what I'm saying. He turned down his player option. But so with that being said, it's not tampering if it's about, if, if right now, as it stands from everything that we're, we've been hearing, Jimmy wants to come to Houston so he's basically telling. No, no. Where'd you hear that? I haven't heard shit. Listen, you gotta see, get on the clutch see, fans. No, you gotta no, get on clutch no, because they're all biased. I'm nah, sorry. Nah, nah. Listen, they might be biased, but right. let me tell you something about clutch fans. Clutch fans know what the hell they're talking about. A few, but there's a lot of. Because <laughs> you since the, there's a, there's some there's a lot of people. Oh, yeah, you got no, there's a, Vincent Goodwills over there. No, no, no. There's never. <laughs> whatever, man. That's blasphemy. The clutch fans. Listen. There is a lot of uh, speculation that, um, and there's been a, a strong cockiness from Daryl Morey because the thing is, James Harden and, and, and Jimmy Buckets are, are really good friends. And um, come on now. They are really good friends. Yeah, but they, he could have chose to nah, come nah, to the nah, Rockets listen. last year. See, that's the one thing that. That wasn't his fault for not what coming do you here mean? last year. We what are you offered, talking about? We offered four first round picks. He didn't turn it down. Minnesota Timberwolves turned it down. He could have said, I'm not going there. He, he didn't. Ha- he doesn't have that clause in his trade, man. I mean, trade clause. Man, I hope you're right, but he doesn't have the trade clause. So, so, so no trade over- clause. There's no trade clause well, for that. He wanted to he get had, traded. So he, he wanted to get his, traded. He yeah. actually wanted to come to Houston. It was one of the teams he wanted to come to, based off of the rumors behind closed doors. But Minnesota was like, no. And we offered like four draft picks. I mean, we offered everything. The, right, the, right. You know, even uh, Gordon, which so, to me would have been a great deal for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Obviously, so. obviously, he has to choose the Rockets. And he has to go to Philly. And he says, listen, I'm not re-signing with you guys. You then can let me go to any other team that's going to w- be willing to give me the money I want and nothing in return. Right. Right? Because you gave up stuff to get me. Right. Right. In that sign and trade to Minnesota. I mean, excuse me, the, the, the trade to, from Minnesota. So you can either let me go for nothing or get something in return. And he literally has to go and tell the brass in Philly to, to do that. So are you turning down $190? If you were, if you were him. Man, I mean, I, it's really technically not $190. It's not. It's technically not one hundred and ninety oh, million dollars. One hundred and ninety million. <laughs> yeah, That's like it's, a quick two hundred bucks. It's technically not one hundred ninety. I'm not million. turning that down. <laughs> it's not. If, if if he signs with Philadelphia, based off the money that he would make for the four year contract in Houston, it'd be equivalent to one hundred ninety million. Man, that's a good point. That's a good point. So that's what I'm saying. Man. Like, and so you get. And here's the thing: people you get some land out in we, Tomball. We've learned a lot from players that they want to be closer to the families more than ever. So. 
it's reasonable to think that he wants to play for his team. And there's too many pictures of him in Rockets, you know, Rockets shirts as a kid that tells you that he's always dreamed about playing for his for his team. And what better time to play for the Houston Rockets when you still have a pretty good team and possibly the the favorite in the West? I know everybody hates that, but they're still the favorite in the West. That's that. That's the one thing. It, it, the Rockets right now, in my opinion, are slightly the favorites. Don't bring up L.A. because they got three players. But sorry, you Josh got L.A., you got, you got um, Denver, and you got Portland. Those are the, the, the top three. And somewhere down below us is the Warriors. And, again, I'm not bringing up the Lakers at this point. Until they have a complete team, then we'll talk about them. But if they were to get Jimmy Buckets, not even close. The Rockets are the favorites. I don't care what the odds say. I don't care what anybody says. The Rockets are the favorites. And especially if Kawhi goes to uh, uh, um, the Clippers, as my man to my right says, they're going to the, he's going to the Clippers. We're overall the favorites. I, at that point, there's no more, there's no more uh, incumbent favorites with, with, with the Toronto Raptors. We are the favorites. But we have to land him first. And Kawhi has to go to the Clippers. <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. It should be interesting. I mean, uh, free agency starts really soon. And so um, I think that for everything that the Houston Rockets have gone through this season um, and, and and as well as the offseason, I think that it would be bittersweet to get uh, Jimmy Butler. So. Yeah. Come on, Jimmy. Come to Houston. Please. <laughs> Did you uh, oh, talk about giving up $190? Did you uh, see the, the Cam Newton thing? So Cam Newton is on a plane. He wants more legroom, so he offers the guy a thousand and five hundred dollars to switch seats with him. Fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Okay. Okay, man. I already messed up with the hundred ninety dollars. You got to point that out too. Sorry, Jesus. It's, it's the same amount. Anyways, would you give up your seat for him? I would, but I would continue bargaining. I've been like, three thousand sounds a lot nicer. <laughs> How much do you love your legs? You got to be running on those legs. What, what would you want, Qua? What was it like? First class? Or? First class. Mm. It was just extra leg room in first class. Did you see the face he gave him, Qua? If you get a chance, man. Pull it up it is a ten-hour flight though, and technically, the only reason why he's on that flight is because he missed his original flight where he had the seat that he wanted because he oh, showed he's up on late. standby. He was he showed up late on the airport. I don't so care. Just saying. That listen, fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Sure, whatever. I, I'll, I'll. You're not bargaining. This is a mandate. No, no. I the best, the best, like, the best thing I heard was somebody uh, pointed out was, I want sweets at the next Carolina game or one of the Carolina games throughout the season and fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. I would do that. I would have asked for three thousand dollars and a signed jersey and signed helmet. That's fair. That's not bad. That's not bad. But you can you could. Cut, Easily flip that for some more money. I don't know I who's buying Cam to be at the game. I want. I want. I like the get, game thing. Me I want the experience too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with him. I mean, I'll take the money. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Right, right. Fifteen hundred and a game experience. I'm down. I'm actually a really nice guy. If I saw it was Cam Newton, I just think personally, I've been like, you can have my seat. I don't even know if I would even accept the fifteen hundred dollars. I just feel like that would have been a moment with me, and maybe just maybe I would have had a plug with him like in the future. You know what I mean? Like he'd always remember me as a guy who just didn't care about the money. Gave him a seat. You never know. That could pay dividends in exactly. the Exactly. He could be on a podcast tomorrow. Exactly. Damn it. <laughs> also, none of, us are, none of us are flying first class. So <laughs> That's true. We wouldn't probably wouldn't have had position. that opportunity. <laughs> That's another thing to be talking about. Right, right. Is that, that, that when they offered that 1,500 people, like, oh, I can't believe he, we don't know how much money that man makes. I mean, obviously, he, exactly. I mean, he's first he class from down. France. So, I mean, obviously, he yeah, probably he has turned money. down. 1, he's probably like 1,500. But did you he see probably his looked face? at him like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> right, right. He's right. like, you I own my see, pillow. Like you didn't get to see his face. You you didn't get to see the guy's uh, face. But Cam Newton looked at him like, "Are you serious? You about to turn down a fifteen hundred dollars?" But also, Cam, bro, what's the what, what contract did you sign last? <laughs> fifteen hundred dollars is like a nickel to you, bro. It really is. It's because it, it to like a nickel, man. <laughs> to us, is a lot of money. Like the only people got mad were poor people. Like all the poor people, like I can't believe. I'm like, that's because you're. We, you don't have you don't have fifty hundred dollars in your in your savings account, so yeah, you're taking that shit. Yeah, that's that, that was that was savings hilarious. account. What's that? See, <laughs> all right, last one. Uh, 
I think I got two. What you want to do? You want to do? Oh, okay, shoot, sure, shoot. Sure. Let's, let's I'll say y'all hear about that that rap battle between uh, Not, Dame see, Lillard and, and you got to play because I haven't heard it. I haven't heard either. All right, well, <laughs> we'll 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 play it later and we'll we'll get to that. Okay, we'll skip that. Uh, have you heard it? No, let's leave that one. I'm low key. I'm like scared to hear it. I feel like to be honest, no, 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 Dame Dame, actually, Dame Dame actually can spit. Right, right, right. I heard him on uh, was it on Sway? What, on, let, let's uh, do this. Let's do this. We'll close out the show with uh, with, with both Dame. their songs. You, okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, do that. Do that. But I don't know. Can you without getting a uh, copyright signature? We already use fucking Jay Z and everybody else's shit. Okay, let's whatever. do it. Let's do it. We'll close Listen, out the I, show with both it, of them. I'm not gonna lie. And I looked at a couple back. of the transcripts. Of right, the, that's of, what I did. Flow, I did. And honestly, it looked pretty weak to me. So, <laughs> but Dan can spit. Dude. I don't care if he can spit. You can still can spit, spit some weak ass lines. I know Dan can spit though. I've Drake spits weak ass lines all the time no, and sells no, records. Chill, chill. So I knew you were a fan. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Just see that. Uh, that Louisville pitcher for, during the College World Series. Oh, that was that, sick. Who did that great stare down? Did you see it? Oh man, did I love stare it? downs. Pull it up. Look at that. There's, there's no audio, but ooh, I love it. He swings, but look at the face though. He keeps his eyes on him, and he's walking to his dugout. <laughs> and then he lets him know, "F you." Right. F you again. Man, it's something he looks a little less cool because he's wearing those goggles the or the glasses. Not at all. Not at all. Right. Reminds, no, man, I think no, it reminds me of uh what's that movie? Uh one of the ba- greatest one? baseball movies of all time. The wild thing, right? Uh what is it? Uh, uh, the, Major, Major League. Major, Major League. League. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, a, that does yeah, remind man. me of that. Yeah, dude, 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 dude. He's like, get off the field. My favorite part is get I love that. You know what's funny? They lost. No. Yeah. I lost. didn't know that. They lost yeah. three to two. Oh, See, here's my thing about baseball. There's so many unwritten rules. I can't stand it, right? That that you can't swing the bat and, and toss the bat. Of course, as long as you're not hitting anybody, I don't give a crap. You throw the the bat as high as you want up in the air. I don't give a shit, you know? Or, or you can't you can't hit a home run and stare at the ball. Come on. I don't care. You hit a home run, stare at the ball all you want. I shouldn't have pitched that pitch. I shouldn't have thrown that throw or whatever, whatnot. I should have. I should have. Placed it in a different spot, so you didn't hit the home run. But all, go for it if you do. Congratulations! If that's what makes you happy, do what you do. And same thing. And I love this. If you strike somebody out, it could have been the first strikeout of the game of the first bat. <laughs> that would have been good with me. I don't care. That's awesome to me. That is that's some that's Listen, some man. If if classic. if I was on his team, he would have had me fucking hyped. But you know that's what? the player you want on your team. Have, did you ever grow up playing like Sandlot base, basket, baseball? Excuse me. I did not. I we I did. Yeah, of course. Okay, bro. If my if I was on some shit like that, oh, dude, me and my me and my teams would talk shit. I I got it. My childhood best friend. We got into eleven fights, physical fist fights. I, I we fought almost all the time about some shit like this. Just like fuck you. We're going to play baseball. I'm, I'm tackling your ass. It's supposed to be flag football. Whatever. I don't give a shit. <laughs> the, 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 original, the original Sandlot over here. Speaking of, of uh, real quick, real quick, last one, last one, last one, I, told, I promise. I, we got, what, no, about four minutes. Um, Sandlot basketball, Sandlot baseball, uh, the Sandlot movie. Turn it in, and we can reference the uh, Space Jam Space Jam 2 is about to start filming or is filming. What you think, man? We gonna watch it? Hell no. You ain't watching it? No. You're crazy. Space Jam, one of the greatest childhood movies of all time. Look, Michael Jordan was a horrible actor in the first Space Jam. So? The it's best. Not like he got another film. The best thing, <laughs> the best thing that ever happened out of that movie, Space Jam, is that dialogue between Larry Bird and Bill Murray. Where 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 Bill Murray actually tells Larry Bird that he's not white, he's actually clear. That was like the best part what? of that whole movie. <laughs> that was like really the greatest part. He's like, you know, you're, you're not white. You're clear. You're clearly like really good. Like it was my the best part of the movie. The one thing I truly remember because the rest of the movie was horrendous. The, the fact Space that, Jam. The fact. Man. Listen, the, what bothers me the most is that Space Jam was from Michael Jordan because he was the greatest player the of all shoe. time. The shoe. It doesn't matter. It's not like LeBron James is about to have like some type of why not? Um, why do you, greatest oh, shoe? Oh, I, I, gar- I guarantee he's gonna have an homage to the uh, what is it, the Levens, right? 
I don't know, but here's the thing. Like, Bugs Bunny had to go get the shoes. I just feel like we're putting LeBron James in the status of GOAT by allowing him to be in Space Jam 2, and that kind of bothers me as well. Like, just oh let Michael Jordan God. have the movie. Here we go. Like, how can, why can't LeBron James just make his own damn cartoon, not be Space Jam 2? It's bad enough he wore his number. Look at that. Look at the court. Look at the court. Yeah, it's, it's blue. It's blue screen. <laughs> Gives a damn. Leaders, I don't know when's the last time like a good sports movie has come out. I feel like it's been. Thank you. Thank I feel you. like it's been a minute. Space Jam wouldn't be considered. Uh, a no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just talking what about. What do you mean? Space Jam Two would be complete, a hundred percent a sports movie. It's a basketball game oh, in a movie. Oh, you know what the last one was was fucking Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew is actually you, pretty good. I, I actually the, never saw hold Uncle on, Drew. Time out, time out. Let, let's let's. Uncle Drew is pretty we, hilarious. Listen. Did you go see it in the theater? Hell no. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I small say I saw Space Jam in the theaters. A lot of us did. All right. Until Red we box. get it, right. Until we get to for a sports movie to push us to the theater, then I'll 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 say yeah, we had a good sports uh, sports movie. And Space Jam was classic. Michael Jordan was a classic. Of the it was hor- It was a horrible movie. Listen, the CGI was a little iffy. It was horrible. That that. The long arm stretch, you know, could have been Porky a little bit better. Porky the Pig was the best actor in the whole movie. Like, Michael Jordan was so out of place. It was horrible. We gave it a pass Yo, he was, because He was Michael in the Jordan air the for best. like 16 minutes. Listen, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we gave that shitty movie a pass because it was Michael Jordan. And listen. It was nostalgic, man. It was, well, yeah, man. You're, you're messing up my, my whole childhood right here. I get that's what you're what saying. That's what your childhood is based <laughs> on. You have a shitty childhood. I get what you're saying. If you're trying to be a fucking a movie critic over here, Mr. Rotten Tomatoes. but I know. This is weird. It's just, it's just a classic, We should look man. up what, what Rotten Tomatoes gave it. I'm pretty sure they it's gave it. It's probably trash. 2%. But it's still a, especially in in our generation that we grew up. Man, spe- do you remember the part where Michael Jordan's actually like in a team huddle talking to? This shit was so bad. It was whatever. Like, LeBron, dude, Bugs Bunny came through, bro. What, uh, well, I would say the good thing is they came out with the hair Jordans. Those were tight, right? That was tight. I'm telling you, John. Mm. See, you found some silver. All right, all right. What's 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 your favorite basketball movie of all no, time? No, d- sports movie. Sports movie. Or yeah. sports, yeah. yeah. Sports movie? Because yes. you can break it down by each sport. Yeah, but let's, let's, say let's, let's bullshit. Do. You ever seen Rudy? I've seen Rudy. Everybody's right. seen Rudy. Yes. He's, he's about, see? See? <laughs> What's wrong with say Rudy? <laughs> Listen. <clears throat> I'm not going to say Rudy. <laughs> but I want to. Uh, actually, my favorite sports movie... Hmm. Honestly, I think... Uh, I, I think like Sand. To think about no, it. no. Think I think I just watched it again the other day. I actually Sandlot. Really? Yeah, man. That's a, that's a that's a good classic. It's movie. just a yeah. favorite movie. Uh, that one, and I'm not gonna lie, Kicking and Screaming is also really? one of my other favorite movies. Really? Okay. That movie's hilarious. With Will Ferrell, if you haven't watched Kicking and Screaming, he literally pushes a kid on the field. The shit's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna go with Space Jam. It's my favorite. Space movie. Jam. You're, really? <laughs> he look at Chris's wow, face. Wow, man. Look at Chris's face. John's never I'm, I'm super I'm not, I'm not gonna lie I'm super excited about Space Jam too. <laughs> I'm sorry I, okay Space Jam may not be my favorite base I mean excuse me movie sports movie but I am looking forward to Space Jam too. and why man can't jump was better than that crap LeBron James it's a good movie too LeBron James has shown some acting chops he 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 looked like he can act better than Michael Jordan so you know, we might give it a little shot and, you know, it might be good. So you maybe he know. is the greatest actor the, of all time that's a CGI player. CGI is better. CGI is better. The The Monstars are going to be probably looking like Godzilla and stuff. So Godzilla, the last John, one was pretty good. the only reasons why you're even going to see this movie is because <laughs> you have a son that would appreciate it. That's it. Shout uh, out to my little one. That's it. Other than that, I could never imagine you actually going to the movie by yourself with hey, popcorn man. and a hey, soda, or icy, actually watching that shit. Listen, we're gonna have a good time. He's gonna, he's gonna, he loves LeBron James. He knows he, he actually likes Curry better than anybody else, but he he knows who LeBron James is, and he's gonna ball out. <laughs> no pun intended, or pun actually intended. <laughs> well, luckily, I don't have to experience that. Mine is grown, so it's all good. Well, y'all get y'all, y'all get to go see mature movies. I'm still in no, that we watch. Age I told you we watch. We try to watch Space Jam the other day, and we we're uh, like, "This is horrible." Yeah, and then y'all watched <laughs> Uncle Drew. Actually, that was actually pretty funny. No, nah, whatever, dude. 
Uh, Watch it. It's really I guess, good. Yeah, I'm going to Redbox. Considering. Definitely. Actually, I didn't even use Redbox. I just didn't want to say this, but I got one of those like illegal oh my God. pirating oh, no, type of no, you had, you way to, to watch Redbox. it. Oh my God. No, I don't even go to Redbox. Why, why can't I go to Redbox and I can just get on my phone and watch it? All right. You got anything else? Close the show. Well, go ahead. I think that's it. Oh, well, I, don't, I really don't know what my favorite sports movie is. Oh, but but didn't even ask him. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, Qua. Oh, th- yeah, thanks for asking, guys. <laughs> Qua, what's your I'm favorite here. sports movie? I'm not here. But Qua, what's your favorite sports movie? I, you, only because I can't stop thinking about it uh, or any other movie or right now because it's just on the top of my head. The Replacements. Oh, that's a good one. With uh, it was so Keanu cheesy. Reeves. It's Reeves. so cheesy. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, but I remember when it came out. Bad. I remember when it came out. I was like, yo. This movie is fire. And then I legit believe oh. Keanu Reeves was like the best actor on the planet. I yeah. was like, yo, yeah. he's Neo and Shane Falco. What? <laughs> I think and you the know best what? Acting in, in any. Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you finish. Well, I was just going to say uh, shout out to Keanu now because I feel like now he's just coming out to his his acting potential. His full right. potential yeah. And he, he still he, plays he, one person, one character. It's just the same character. Yo, che- check him. Check him in this uh, uh, this John Netflix movie. Oh, no, okay. No, 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 no. I watched John Wick too. John John Wick was great. John Wick three was amazing. John John Wick three was great, but you're right. He still plays this, and I can't get over it. I I just listen to his acting. I'm just like, you're so fucking bad. Like he, <laughs> like the action is great. I appreciate that he does all his own stunts. Like he's he's a badass, and he's a great person. Yeah, I hear great things about him. Like how he is. He like takes the subway and like he takes public transportation. He's like a kind person. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. everything about him, I think is great. But his acting is just <laughs> like not good. But I was gonna say, watch this uh, this Netflix movie called uh, "Always Be My Maybe." That's a great movie. Oh, he's in that, right? I, I saw that. It. It's a good movie. He has a great scene in there. I, I saw he, the you scene. Know, you know I who he plays scene. himself. The- it's oh, and it's oh, does fucking he? he makes fantastic. fun of himself. Big oh time. wow, that's cool. it's fucking fantastic. That's and cool. he just got uh, it just got confirmed that he's going to be in the future of the MCU. So, no, but yep. they don't know where to put him, right? Yeah, well, something we'll like see. that. I, I I trust it. I trust I, Kevin dude, Feige. I've I've saw I saw a couple of renditions of him being Wolverine. No, what? Yeah, dude. Why? I don't know. Listen, Listen I don't, I'm, I'm a hey, big Keanu Reeves, but he's you wanna, no way You want him to be Gambit. Hey, That's no, what Hugh Jackman. Hell no. I don't want him <laughs> playing Gambit either. I had problems with Jason, uh, was it uh, Jason Tam trying, trying no, to play- uh, that's Aquaman, bro. What no, what are you talking about? Uh, Tatum was supposed to be- Oh, oh, Gambit, or Channing, yeah. Channing Tatum? Channing, there you go, Channing Tatum. He's right. old as hell. All right. Uh, yeah. So- you had one more thing? Uh, no, just this a a, a quick uh, you know shout out. Um, this is the end. Oh, of, shout out! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's June. It's the end of June, and this is National Men's Health Awareness Month. Um, so this is your PSA. Yeah, man. Well, I don't know if it's a PSA. Well, it's an outro PSA. Uh, for yeah. me, it's just really importantly uh, important that um, as men, we actually take care of ourselves, get ourselves checked out. If you haven't had checked up, uh, check up with the doctors. Go get a checkup. Um, this also is, uh, from a mental health standpoint, like if you're dealing with some things, man, go get that checked out. But overall, like a lot of us men have a lot of pride. We don't like to go to the doctors, John. So like, as you get older, go to the doctors, man. I mean, make sure yourself is, make sure your, everything is good, man. So you can keep living and being the best you. No, there you go, man. Um, I, 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 I agree. That's a PSA if I've ever heard one. So shout out to that. Yeah, man. Get your balls checked. Let's go. All right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much again, once again. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we had a blast as always. Peace. Look, fresh off the plane with like 30,000 feet off the ground. Quick flight, but like, then I took some time to write my body. Start to feel it. Them goosebumps. Yeah, I got them now. And when I hit the studio, no way had not a sound. Quiet on me. Ducking around the corners. They hiding on me. Your boy's out of style. Sound like you.